Hi folks, Nathaniel here at Chicago Music Exchange and I'm joined by... I'm Mike. And what have we got here, Mike? Uh, today we have two uh, really cool Travis Beans from the 70s. Uh, mm. It's actually really awesome that we have both of these at the same time. Yeah. Um, it was kind of funny the way it happened. Someone reached out to us with this one. We ended up acquiring it and like the next day someone reached out with this and I was like, we're doing a video. Uh, a diff a different person? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, what's yeah. the chance of that? Yeah. Are you familiar with Travis Bean at all as a... As I, a I am, I mean, I wasn't too familiar with who played him. I had a vague idea of, I know I've seen a couple of people play them, um, mm -hmm. but I, yeah. I didn't really know the history and you know why it came to be. Sure, yeah, I mean, the idea was, as far as I'm aware, just trying to do something different, mm. you know, something different from the typical wood guitar, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, so Clifford Travis Bean, in 74, I believe, designed these with Gary Kramer. If you're familiar with Kramer yeah, guitars yeah. later on, he separated and did Kramer guitars. Uh, and a guy named Mark McElwee. They all have such a unique sound because it's this solid aluminum neck that runs through into this solid aluminum uh, block yeah. here in the body. And yeah. the pickups and the bridge are actually mounted to that. The yeah. the wood is a kind of an insert around the rest of it. Oh, wow. And uh, they just have a ton of sustain. Um, they sound really bright, usually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the wooden fretboards on these, as opposed to some of the more modern stuff, mellows them out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, they play a little bit more like a wooden neck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's interesting that you mentioned the bright sound because initially I wouldn't have been able to tell a Travis Bean guitar mm -hmm. from a record, but after sure. doing a bit of research and looking at who played them and listening to them, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, wow. They kind of stand it's out. It's yeah. kind of obvious now, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, they're really comfortable to play. I actually really like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. This one is from the 70s as well, right? Mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. And this is the TB1000A. Correct. I got yeah. it right. I got yeah, it right. The, the guitar models, the standard models, are the TB1000S and TB1000A. Mm. The difference being the A has a carved body, whereas the S is kind of a slab body. Yeah. And it's got block inlays, whereas the standard has ah, dots. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I really like this one. Like I said, the, the carves, uh, the body and the block mm -hmm. inlays. I'm a big fan of block inlays. Yeah, Great. they're usually koa bodies too, which are usually really pretty, yeah, you know, yeah, really yeah. highly figured stuff. This is a TB2000, which is the base model. Uh, really the same idea as far as construction, just, you know, it's a base. Mm. Uh, now, is there any kind of notable players of a Travis Bean base? Just name two, two, so they can't like go crazy at us. Yeah, so Bill Wyman from the Rolling Stones actually was known for playing one just like this. Yeah. And then uh, the guys from Shellac. Uh, Foles. Mm -hmm. The Jesus Lizard. Yeah. Uh, I know Ronnie Wood and Keith Richards used to use them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Slash used to use it on only on one song though, Bad Obsession. Interesting. Apparently. Huh. Uh, I yeah. could be wrong, don't go crazy now. But, <laughs> you know. uh, but yeah, very fun guitars. Uh, I think we're going to check out how they sound. Absolutely. Absolutely. 